Hello and welcome to Defend the Rook. This is a roguelike tactics board combat game combined with tower defense elements. And it is a game that seems to be right up my alley and hopefully up yours too. <laughs> up yours? Sorry, this is a sponsored video. Uh, and I have just gone through the tutorial. Um, afterwards, it actually threw me right into the game. So I had to go into the settings and reset everything. So I now have no longer any of my buffs that I got from the tutorial. But that's okay. It gives us a nice fresh experience. So let's jump into it. We get a little bit of dialogue first and then we'll go straight into the actual battle. Uh, no, I've just done the tutorial, so thank you very much. Are you certain this is the right place? Worry not, your grace. The rook follows my commands to the letter. You should be quite aware of that by now. Of course. I did not mean to doubt your capabilities. They are nothing short of legendary. Then I trust you will have no issues with paying a suitable price for my services. A single barrel of gems should be enough. I thought that such mundane commerce was beneath you. I bowed my head into the mud and begged for your help. Is that not enough to show my appreciation? That payment is not for my benefit, but yours so that you understand the value of my gesture. I appreciated your humility, but that alone is not enough. Saving a kingdom will always require sacrifices. Be happy that yours is paid in gold rather than blood. You were right. Clever of them to sneak through the northern plains while your forces are occupied in the mountains. Too clever. I wonder if those pieces are enough. Do not doubt these legends, Your Grace. Their names might have faded from history, but their power is very much alive within my tokens. You should leave now. Let me send you back. I prefer to work alone. Get out of here. All right, so uh, as you might be able to understand already from the uh, dialogue that this is basically, well, it's not basically chess, but it, 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 it has a little, it's reminiscent of chess, uh, except you have different pieces that are, you know, rogues and knights and wizards and stuff. Um, and also the rook is the most important piece on the board because that is, I mean, the game is called Defend the Rook. Um, oh God. So yes, I, uh, I haven't actually looked around at this at all. I've just played the tutorial, which throws you into a couple of battles to show you how that works. But I guess we can have a look at, uh, I mean, I, it's not a whole lot to look at yet, I'm assuming, because we haven't got any loadouts and stuff to choose from yet, I would imagine. But yeah, we have different characters. So the warrior, rogue, and sorceress, those are the three I've used so far. And then we have a bunch of towers and that's where the tower defense uh, element of the game comes into play as well. And the towers do different things. And then of course there's the rook who is basically the main character. If he dies, the game ends or you lose your run. Uh, I suppose that's where the roguelike elements come into play. Uh, and then yeah, different towers that do different things. We've got barricades, freeze traps, yada yada. Uh, then we have the spell loadout. I haven't seen any of these spells yet, so that's cool. Our spells for this run, you may unlock more choices via spell upgrades. So we have Stone Shield, gives us armor. It's not. I, it's, uh, I should probably jump into the game, really, because you guys don't know what any of these things mean yet until we get in there. We also have uh, upgrades that we can get, I suppose, but we haven't got any gemstones yet. So let's just do a battle. Right, we hop into the mountains. We have Azesh, the Demon Lord. His strength, sorry, he grows in power the longer he remains in battle. Uh, his underlings are disorganized and inexperienced. He gains plus two power at the end of each turn, okay. As Jash has recruited a horde of orcs, goblins, and their wolves to launch an assault against the Golden Kingdom, vanquish the horde so that you may uphold your bargain with the queen. All right, let's start the battle. We have five phases to this battle. I recognize that floating castle. Magister, to what do I owe this reunion? Squashing your pitiful invasion sounded like a respectable use of my powers, Ajesh. Tell me, what are you after now? Gems, my feeble conjurer. The kingdom is ripe with gemstones and I will claim their power. Typical. I will not allow that, of course. Letting you pass would sully my reputation. Hmm. You should know by now. I am unending. You will learn to fear me, Magister. I will force your eyes open. Alright. Oh, my warrior's even talking as well now. Cool, so here you go. This is this is the basic uh, gist of the game, or not the gist of the game. This is the basic gameplay right here. We have three characters as of right now. 
um, who are, again, the warrior, the sorcerers, and the rogue. We have our rook, which is, again, the most important piece on the battlefield. And then we have a bunch of uh, items that we can use. we got our spells here. So we have stone shield, which is what I looked at just now. It gives us armor, which basically gives us defense, I guess. Uh, this guy's currently got eight armor. You can see there, this is the attack they have, the, de uh, the health they have, and then the same for the enemies, of course. And then, yeah, that little icon is how much armor we have. This little icon means that this character is ranged. The other two are melee. The rook is also ranged. Uh, but yeah, then we have Invigorate, reactivate one of your heroes, allowing them to move and attack again. And we have Obliteration, destroy a tower and deal 20 damage to enemies in a two-tile radius of its former position. We have a certain amount of charges and we can only use that once per battle. I don't quite know if that means... I think so, like this is battle one, round one, there's five ways, and after that we have, you know, round two, etc. So I'm assuming we can only use, the, in the five waves that we have, I, I can only use these once. I, I, don't, I didn't pay enough attention during the tutorial to really figure that out. Um... And then we have barricades, which just block stuff and also taunts enemies. Uh, free straps, which the enemies, when they walk into them, they take free damage and are stunned, so they don't use their move anymore. Uh, Arcane Tower has medium range, medium damage. Cannon Tower has long range, low damage. And Emerald Tower has short range and high damage. You can use these, uh, well, once per battle, you can put them down. But if they survive, they just stay there the whole time. So what would be really good, actually, is putting the uh, the Emerald Tower right here because it does a lot of damage. It does act at the beginning of your turn, so the enemies do get a turn before that, before this thing will fire. Uh, but yeah, it will currently blow up a bunch of stuff, so I'm kind of tempted to put it here, to be honest. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, we have the Cannon Tower with long range. We can put that somewhere towards the back. Um, probably over here seems like a decent position, not really in the back. And then with the, the Emerald Tower, just medium range, kind of went up that towards the middle. So we'll put those there. Uh, our rogue can actually currently already murder this guy right here, so I think we're going to go ahead and do that. Just try to murder this thing. There are sometimes uh, benefits to getting other characters into range to get uh, bonuses. Like, she can get an upgrade where if she's in range of people getting murdered, she will actually uh, get stronger, essentially, from that. Uh, unfortunately, our warrior can't get anywhere near, so I'm just going to move him up for now. And we're going to wait with him, and then we're going to move her up and just kill this thing. Yeah, let's move over there. Murder that one. Is this my blood? Uh, so yeah, we could if we wanted to in, um, re invigorate our characters and go again, but I uh, don't really want to do that. I'm going to move him up and then just wait right there, and that's all we can do. Unless we want to use some spells, but I don't think we need to. They're probably going to attack the tower because the enemies usually attack the thing closest to them. But the tower's not going to blow up both those things, both those goblins, which is painful, but, you know, it uh, does its job. That's what it's there for. Plus free armor for each barricade in play. Oh, wow, that's pretty good. Um, a free step, the rogue can move through enemy units, dealing the rogue power as uh, dealing the rogue power as damage to them. Holy shit, that's insane. So if I move it through a unit, it just straight up takes 10 damage. If I can move through multiple at a time, oh my god. End of the turn, the sorcerer gains four temporary armor standing next to a blocked tile. Now, I'm gonna go for free step. That seems insane. If I can get it going. Alright, so now we have a round of nothing. Uh, we're basically waiting for the next wave to arrive, so I'm not really gonna do, whole, do a whole lot, and, except for maybe put my pieces... I don't know if I want them more centralized. Uh, we'll see in a minute where the enemies are gonna spawn. I'll probably put the rook in the center, so why don't you go over here and wait. And you go over here. Wait. And then we'll put you... Let's go over here. I'm sure there's going to be enemies around here somewhere that we can do something with. And you are just going to stay where you are. So let's do that. All right. So now we can see where the enemies are going to come from. So we can put our, our um, pieces next to those. So I'm going to put the rook or the uh, rogue right here. There could be stronger enemies, though. That's something to keep in mind. I might not be able to kill those enemies if I just move through them. But we'll see. Uh, the knight is going to go... I can't even reach this one right now, but I can next turn. I might need some more help over here, though. I feel like the Rook's going to be able to deal with this shit pretty easily. Or the, why do I keep killing, calling him the Rook? It's a Rogue. So I'm going to set you up right there, and then uh, we'll have the uh, the other pieces there to do that. So that sounds good. We could put some traps and stuff down, but they're just spawning this turn. They're not actually going to do anything yet, so I'm going to hold off. Oh shit, there was an extra enemy there. I didn't even notice. What the hell? Alright, so these things both have um, 6 HP, so I can actually move through them, kill both of them, and then whack this guy. Oh my god, that's insane. Uh, I don't know if I'd be able to deal with her, though, which is uh, slightly unfortunate. You can't reach either, okay. This thing has got 14 HP. I have enough damage with the Rook and her, though, so I can kill it, and then you can kill this guy, so that sounds 
good to me. So then you want to go there and hit it, and then you want to go there and hit it, and then that's that. This isn't over. Well, you're dead, so... Uh, now what I could do, um, if I wanted to, I could put a interdimensional thief. I don't know what this thing does, because he doesn't have any attack, so I'm not sure what this guy is all about. But what I can do, if I really wanted to not move, I could put a barricade down here and then a freezing trap here and then it has to go through there. But I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna see what it does, because I have no idea what this guy even does. So let's just let him do his thing. Currently has zero attack and it's not doing Oh, it didn't it just doesn't do anything. Okay. Um fair enough. All right, well I'm gonna s I guess I could hold on, let's cancel that. I guess I could kill this thing maybe. I can't because it has two armor. Let's see what happens anyway. Okay, it's just gonna sit there, fine. I'm gonna move the rook a little bit more centralized and, or this way so I can maybe help out there next turn. Gonna wait. You're gonna go towards the middle and wait, and then you're gonna go towards the middle and wait as well. Alright, let's see if this thief does anything. He does, but not really. Why can't you just be... Okay, this, I don't need I couldn't even read that. Okay, I guess I just have to kill this thing before we can move on and do the next turn, basically. Alright, we have two temporary armor each time they damage an enemy. Elite Slayer, with a rogue attacks an elite or boss, they deal an additional 10 damage and gain plus 5 temp armor. Okay, he's currently really good at not killing elites, so... When a mid-tier spell is cast, the sorcerer gains plus 4 move until the end of the turn. Doesn't seem in that important either, plus I don't know how many mid-tier spells we have. I'm actually gonna go for Elite Slayer, so now he's good at killing everything, I guess. He can run through a bunch of shitty boys and then... Um... And then end up at the boss and slaughter the boss. Sounds good. Holy fuck. The rogue's gonna go fucking mad here in a second. We're gonna run through all of that. Oh boy. Um, I'll put you here to deal with that stuff. Gonna wait. We're gonna place you right over... Oh boy, a lot of shit up stuff over there as well. I'm gonna place you right over here so I can help out with that stuff. Rook, we don't want you to die, but I do. I might need your help, so let's get you a little bit this way. The towers are going to have a great turn as well right away. Although, well, not this one's not going to be able to do anything, but the other one's spoil. And I can also place my barricades and stuff next turn too. Oh, shit. It actually worked out really well. Oh, what a waste of a kill. You can go all the way through both those two, kill them both, and then do an extra plus 10 damage against him or not. Maybe he's not on elite. Well, rip. Oh god, if I reinvigorate him... That's a mid-tier spell, by the way. Ah, oh, I see. We have one low, one mid, and one high. I can actually run through this guy and hit and kill him, but and then kill that one as well. But I can't run through any other stuff. That's not great. I'll have to consider that. You only do 10, but together with the Rook, you can kill that one. Uh, what else do we have, by the way? Armor and destroy a tower and deal 20 damage to enemies in a 2 tower rage. Uh, we don't have any towers to just... Oh, I have my own towers, I guess, but that's not super helpful. You can just kill a guy, which isn't great. But it's all you've got. These are all ranged as well. Okay, I'm gonna do... A re... or... It's, it's just invigorate, isn't it? Yeah, it's not reinvigorate. Alright, you're gonna go through that guy. And then just whack that guy. Both of them are dead as well. Then I guess you guys are gonna team up and slaughter the big boy. And then you're gonna go ahead and kill this guy here. And then I'm not sure, I assume their range is free, so they could just both shoot him, but there's no point putting any free straps down, because they're not going to move, I imagine. This guy's going to shoot him, I assume. So I don't think there's a whole lot of stuff I could do besides that. I could I could invigorate more, but I don't think that's worth it right now. We have still a couple of waves to go, so maybe not use all of our stuff right now that we don't need to. Oh, they did both move, so I guess I could have done something better than that, but oh well. Alright, uh, you kill this fella, and then you whack that one, and then you kill that one. And I guess that's all. Alright, when the rogue attacks an elite, or... Okay, so he was I guess that wasn't an elite, because... I, I do wonder if this actually means that I do plus... I do 20 damage against the boss? Ugh. When a high tier spell is cast, which I still have, the sorcerers gain plus 10 power and plus 1 damage radius until the end of the turn. That's not... I, my my high tier spell is kind of shit, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go Elite Slayer. I guess we have that twice now. That'd be pretty baller if we do. Yeah, it does look like we do. Yep, times two. Oh, that's pretty baller. Alright, cool. Uh, let's end the turn. 
Oh shit, Rogue, you're gonna have to run like an absolute mad lad, dude. I don't think you're gonna be able to do anything this turn. That's unfortunate. Uh, you're gonna have to wait. I could invigorate him to move up a little bit faster, but... You're gonna go right there. You are gonna stay kind of where you are. There's a lot of enemies here, I don't like this. Are you... Yeah, you should be in range to shoot some... Thing. No, you're not. Because I think that range ends there, and th yeah, these are all... Oh, that's unfortunate. You are in range, though. Okay. You can get a shot off. I don't know how much you're going to be able to do, but we'll see. You wait right there. Rook, go over here. Leave a space for the rogue, actually. I didn't think about that. Alright, cool. Um, we may need some traps and stuff this time. I can put a barricade here and then a freeze trap here. We basically sort it. If the ears are melee. Which they are. Nice. We kill a wolf immediately. That's pretty good. We've got a 16 health fellow here. So what we could do... Let's see here. We can kill this guy with both their attacks, but then we don't kill this one. Uh, Rogue, can you... You can't get anywhere quite yet this turn, okay. So I could basically... I think what I'll do is we'll kill this one. You kill that one. And then we'll just put a freezing trap here. And he's not going to go all the way around, I don't think. I'm pretty sure they can't see the trap, so he's just going to run straight into that. You are going to kill this one off, and then you're gonna put another freezing trap here, and then I'm pretty sure, because he, oh, he might go that way though. I could put a barricade there, but that feels a bit dumb, to be honest. I should probably not have placed that one there. That might have been a mistake. Uh, but oh well. There you go. That's it. Let's end it. Uh, oh shit. Who did oh yeah, you, did, you should probably come up here, actually. Good point. My bad. Wait. Thanks for letting me down. Oh, I did go that way as well. Smart orc. Smork. That's okay, we have armor, so we could take that, it's not a problem. That's completely wasted now, that's never gonna get used, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Alright, so Rogue Magai, you can go over and kill this feller. Which means that you can go whack him and you can help kill him. And that's that. Alright, Quaking Steps. Plus one move, deal your armor as damage to adjacent enemies at the end of your turn. Ooh, it's not bad, we have eight armor, so... If the rogue didn't attack this turn, gain plus two temporary range at the start of the next turn. Range, interesting. And the sorceress gains plus four, or gains four temporary armor each time they attack. Now I'm gonna go for quaking steps. That seems pretty decent. I just have to end up next to enemies. All right, uh, rook, go more central. Wait right there. Okay, we got enemies all over the shop again. Um, let's see how many enemies I can run through. Not a whole lot, to be honest. I think we're just going to move you over here. Wait right there. You are going to wait right next to this fella. You are going to wait right over here. I could put a barricade here, and then he has to go that way, and he might just go like that. So that might not be a bad idea, but it depends. If this is the ranged character, I might not want to do that, because it would just be a waste. Uh, and Rook Guy, you can sit right where you are. Or one tile... That way, I guess. That's a melee boy. Alright. Oh, you immediately get some shots off. Nice stuff. You're gonna go... I'm gonna put a barrel here. I don't know if it's worth it, but... Rook, you can kill... No, you can't. That's a 10 health guy. I did not realize. So he's gonna go for the freezing trap, except the freezing trap is no longer active. If the rogue moves uh, onto it, it does actually activate again. Which is pretty good, but that's not very helpful right now, because... Reasons. Um... Okay, well you might go through there, so I'm not worried about that. You can kill this guy, but then I wait. I don't get anything from my uh, uh, my special ability. But on the other hand, that seems a bit unnecessary as well. So let's just kill a guy. Unfortunately, you can't move after attacking. It's the you can only move and then attack. So you can kill this guy or kill that guy. That seems the more logical one because this guy has to go for the trap basically. Which means let's see, I. Unfortunately, I can't move through him when I go here. It's unfortunate. I did say it was unfortunate, didn't I? Um, I could go here, then attack him, then invigorate him, move through him, and attack this guy, so I can kill both of them this turn. Not a terrible idea, but I, I feel like I might need these for a later game. Um, this guy does one damage, but he has 13 armor. Holy fuck. You can hit him, but that's not necessary. I think we're just going to weaken him. I'm not getting paid enough for this. Alright, I think we're just gonna kill one. 
to be honest. Then we'll get hit by him. Actually, he might go there and hit this thing instead. I don't know what I prefer. Probably that, actually. Um, okay. And then I could put a freezing trap here to freeze this guy, but I think, again, it's just not necessary. I could give plus four armor here, just in case, I guess. Why not? Oh yeah, I guess I could do that with him as well, and then he has 12 armor, he does more damage. That's interesting. Might be a little cool combination we could do. Aha, good thing I did that. And then he's gonna die from that. Which is pretty good. Actually, no, he's not gonna die. Take a bunch of damage, but not die. Alright, Rook, that's an easy kill for you. Can you get there with your plus one move? No, not quite. You can get there. Uh, you got 10 damage. You can't even hit that one, so no point even trying, so go kill that one. You are gonna go over here. Might get slapped by him, but that's okay. You're gonna whack him and not even kill him, which is kind of pathetic, to be honest. You suck. Uh, do I want to get some extra armor? Yeah, I think I'll uh, try and prevent some more damage. Alright, next wave's the boss, by the way. Oh man. Oh, nice. That's pretty good. Minus two armor, plus one move. Uh, that's kind of counterintuitive. When a trap is triggered, the rogue gains plus ten temporary power at the start of the next turn. Oh, that's not bad. At the start of the at the end of the turn, if the sorcerer is next to a, the warrior, gain plus four temporary armor. If they're next to the rogue, rogue gains stealth. Now I'm gonna take the uh, when the trap gets triggered because we still have a trap we can actually just place wherever we want it. You've taken some damage. Not super happy about that. I need him to be. Basically, I guess let's put him in the center so he's the most likely to be able to get to the boss because we want to move him onto the boss because he does that plus 20 damage. I don't know how much health the boss is going to have, but if we can wipe him in a single turn, that'd be pretty good. Uh, besides that, I think I might just stick to where I am, really. In a decent position. Oh, I could have actually activated that trap again. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, let's just stay where we are. Alright, so I don't know which one... Oh, I do know which one the boss is. That's him right here. Alright, well, let's just focus him down, I guess. He does get stronger every time, so this is not a bad idea. Then... You do damage at the end of your turn, right? Yeah, which I'm guessing is before they spawn, so that's not very helpful. But it would be very cool if it did that. Uh, this is pretty good, actually. We still have that situation. Also, that guy from here before didn't go into the trap, did he? He must have gone like that. Annoying. Uh, I think you guys are in a decent position, so I'm going to just keep you right there. Alright. I guess we could put a freeze trap here, but I don't know what kind of enemies it, this is. I could just do it next turn, there's no reason not to. Oh my god, it's got 80 fucking health. Ooh, and he immediately gets an extra ten, uh, 2 damage as well. I do 30 to it, and then I guess I can invigorate twice to kill it. Do I take return damage? Ooh boy, that's not good. I could just move through it first and then deal damage that way, right? I wonder if that does extra damage too. That's... Rogue attacks? No, I guess it's only when attacking. This isn't technically considered ta attacking. When a trap is triggered, yeah, we can't manually trigger a trap unless I can just place one on top of someone, but I somehow doubt that. No, that doesn't work. Alright, well I can only attack him a couple times before I die. But I certainly can... Oh, it does as well! Oh my god, so it doesn't... It's not considered... Oh, that's brutal. Oh, it's armor that I gain. Wait, why do I get armor now? Oh, because of that! Oh, right, that's what that is. Okay, well then, yeah. <laughs> Just invigorate him once. Hey, you. Walk through him again and murder him, please. Um... Yeah. Okay, see ya. And then... I don't think I've got anything else to do, so there goes the boss. Oh, I don't even have to kill everything else. Nice. Although, to be fair, I probably get more experience for killing everything, so that may have been a bit of a waste, but... Oh well. Uh, if an emer emerald tower is destroyed, the warrior gains plus one damage radius until the end of the battle. Plus one damage radius. That's pretty good, but the emerald tower is... That's only one of the three towers. Um... And, yeah, this doesn't come into play very often. When the rogue kills... I don't... Do we even get this? Because... It, I mean, this is, is this about to... Unless this is a permanent upgrade, because this is the final wave, so I'm, otherwise this would just go away immediately. When the rogue kills an enemy, it drops a temporary trap. The trap deals 3 damage when triggered and is destroyed upon triggering. Hmm. 
not terrible, I guess. And once per round, when the sorceress destroys an enemy, they can make one extra attack. Not terrible, but you have to be in range for that. I'm actually going to go for a leftover surprise. It seems kind of fun. And the rogue is just ridiculously strong, it seems. These three, why do they feel so familiar? You may have encountered them when they were still alive. Another place and time. Which reminds me, you don't belong here, do you, Ajash? Goodbye, dullard demon. Coward, you should have at least killed me with your own hands. So yeah, lots of experience, but we could have gotten a bit more if we killed the other guys as well. Oh, that was the whole thing. Man, I thought I was just like a single of the five levels, but I was, I guess, all five levels. That's crazy. Right, how do I go back? Uh, I want to go back to the to the little upgrade menu, please. How, do I, how does one do that? I don't want to save and quit. Is there a way to just go back? I guess not. Oh, here we go. Level up, right? That's how you do it. Um, we got Raffer now. Raffer is known for his evasive tactics while boasting heavy ranged artillery from his ship Icebreaker. Raffer never strays too far from his ship. The enemy turns turn summon three random cannons and teleport to another town. Oh, that's kind of fun. Let's level up. So the leveling up system works with the uh, experience. So we get to spend that. We can uh, go for the warrior. He's going to get uh, plus two temp armor at the end of a turn. Uh, for adjacent heroes, actually, not for him. Or straight up plus two power. Two temporary armor when the rogue kills an enemy. Or plus, plus three power. Whenever you damage an enemy, you gain plus one XP. It does not work on summoned units. That's pretty good. Uh, or plus two armor. I'm going to go for plus three damage here. With 56. So we can get... Uh, we can actually get, oh, we're too, too experienced short of being able to get another level and then both of those. On this one, I think Searing Experience seems pretty good. Plus two armor is not that important. Well, it might be in the late game, but right now, getting more experience, leveling up faster seems pretty good. Uh, and then I need to actually choose what I want to do. I should have thought about this sooner. The first loot upgrade each battle is guaranteed to be rare. That's pretty good. Uh, plus 8 max health, that's pretty decent as well. Gain plus 1 temporary range after you move. Your attacks ignore armor. Ooh, that could be pretty good as well. Gain plus 1 temporary range when you move. That's not bad, so you just always have plus 1 range every turn, basically. Uh, your final thing would be plus 1 move or plus 8 health. I think we're just going to go for plus 2 damage for him as well. That probably seems decent. And it's a nice safe bet. Alright, so I can't afford anything else. It'll tell us. Cool. And then we have the shop. So we have uh, all the upgrades for our towers and uh, our traps as well. So barricades and freeze trap. We, you need to use gold for that. So these all have different upgrades as well. So our rook, of course, again, uh, if it is destroyed, the run is over. So you need to make sure this thing doesn't get destroyed. Uh, I also forgot about this. Enemy that attacked the rook are instantly destroyed. Does not work on elites or bosses. I don't think I had it attacked once, but in the tutorial I did. And yes, it destroys everything. Uh, right, so yeah, we basically initially just get a bunch of health upgrades. It's the same for all of these things, um, which is good. Although for the trap, I guess, the, can the trap even be... Oh, plus one damage. I was going to say, can this even be attacked? But yeah, all these ones are health except for that one. Uh, and then they all have different things. So the rook gains extra range, uh, heals one after each wave. And then it has an epic ability at the end. Um, this is the Arcane Towers, the medium one. Yeah, medium, medium. When attacked, uh, deal four damage to uh, enemies in a free tile radius. And then it gets plus two armor. Uh, free health for the long range tower. Yeah, and then if, it, if it's destroyed, gain an additional trap to place. And I think this one's my favorite one, the Emerald Tower, which is the short range high damage one. Gains plus one range, pretty good for a short range tower. And then if there's no enemy in uh, attack range at the start of your turn, pull the closest non-elite or boss enemy to an adjacent tile if possible. Pretty decent, I think. Um, I gotta say though, I feel like I saw a plus one damage on this one earlier but maybe i didn't anyway uh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go for this range on this one here so i'm gonna operate this one a couple of times plus one range seems really good oh and then it goes that way i didn't even realize it goes like that so it doesn't get two upgrades in a row that makes a lot more sense actually um i guess of course it probably is worth looking at the epic upgrades as well but we have 48 bucks left so i could upgrade another one three to uh, four times when attacked deal four damage to enemies in a free tile radius. That seems pretty decent if if I put it in the middle somewhere. This is the medium range 
That seems pretty okay. This is also quite good because it's just, yeah, traps are quite nice. Barricades, more health is not bad. Yeah, I think we'll just upgrade this one here. Uh, there, that's how I click it. I knew. Alright, and then we have eight bucks left over, but we have some pretty good upgrades. Can place one more arcade tower. Oh, that's pretty baller. If the cannon tower destroys an enemy, it fires again with plus two damage. Maybe that's what I saw earlier. And then, if there's a contraption next to this tower, deal five damage to enemies in a free tile radius around this tower. Ooh. Not bad. All right, well, I think that is gonna do for this video on Defend the Rook. So yeah, seems uh, seems a pretty fun little strategic battle, roguelike. The only thing I'm wondering, since I only, like that took about half an hour, if that, um, and there seems to be four, uh, four more levels, and I'm not sure if there's anything else after this. So I don't know how long the game, I mean, it is roguelike, so I guess there's some replayability there. There's got to be, but um, yeah, I don't know entirely how much gameplay there really is after that. Uh, but anyway, that will do for now. Thank you guys so much for watching Defend the Rook. As I s actually, I know I haven't said this yet, but it's uh, standard as always. If you like this game, there's a link in the description as well as in the pinned comment below. If I remember to pin one, which I'm sure I will, because I'm such a good guy. Um, yeah, make of it what you will. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day and goodbye.